Let's get the change going. Let's get the change going. Let's fill our hearts today. Yeah. Let's keep a change going. No matter what is flowing. Let's keep a since it's all around. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this place I like to call the mental house. Um and or the um place where we talk mentals, whichever suits you. Um, but what I would like to do is I would like to do a recap. Um Milwaukee had an NAACP dinner. Where we invited um, one of, I call her um, my sister of, well, I call her, um, yeah, my sister from another mother. And she came to the NAACP and, of course, she's talked about what she's been talking about for over 50 years. And that is the uh, madness of white supremacy and white people. Somebody said, well, ooh, I don't want to deal with this, but I want y'all to understand, and I, I want y'all to feel me. White people, I want you to hear me. Most white people are racist, prejudiced. If they don't have no power, then they're prejudiced. I mean, they're, they're racist. If they don't have no power, I'm sorry, they're prejudiced. Now, I want to ask all my free and thinking people, how do you think that their mindset would be if they've been lied to, just like Donald Trump, and told that everything white is great? How, what kind of arrogance do you expect to come from a people like that? What kind of insanity do you expect to come from a people like that? Okay, it's not normal. When you've derived a society where white is right, brown stick around, black stay back, then the consequences of that is hatred, injustice, and immoral conduct. Okay, it's the only thing that can come from something like that. And I commend Jane Elliott for spending all her life pretty much working to dismantle white supremacy. So when I had the opportunity to see her at the NAACP meeting, um, and she was interviewed by uh, Milwaukee Journal journalist James Causey, I think he did an excellent job, and I also think that this is a very important message so for those of y'all who haven't heard it, please listen. Sit yourself down, calm down for a minute, go get what you need. If you need libation, go get it. If you need some, uh, whatever you need to make you more attentive, please hear our sister, uh, Jane Elliott, describe for you what her life has been like and either we're going to receive it or we're going to keep fighting it as a community, as a people. Here we go. Come on, Jane. And matter of fact, it's from uh, James uh, loaded up on Black Nouveau. Okay. We had a chance to talk to her. Here's part of that interview. For people who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a third grade teacher in a country school near Rice, in Riceville, Iowa. Iowa. And I am here at the NAACP speaking because the day after Martin Luther King Jr. was killed by a society that hated him because he was going to change the economic situation in this country, I did an exercise in discrimination with my third grade classroom to let my little third graders, all white, all Christian children, find out how it feels to be something other than white in the United States of America. I split them according to the color of their eyes and treated those who had their own color eyes for the day the way we have traditionally treated blacks, Native Americans, Asians, all those Jews, all those who are different in appearance or in religion. And we learned more that day than I wanted to know. 
What did that study show you? Oh, it showed me a lot of things. Number one, it showed me that racism is a learned response. Nobody's born a bigot. You have to teach bigotry, and that's what we do in this country. I found out how it feels to be on the receiving end of racism because I'm blue-eyed, and the brown-eyed children were on the top in that first day. And I found out how it feels to be treated badly by people who, over whom you have power because of the wrong, uh, having the wrong color eyes. I found out how it feels to be subjected to unbelievable and unreal discrimination because of a physical characteristic over which I had no control. I thought I knew about racism. I thought I knew about child psychology. I knew nothing. I, all I knew was what I had learned in school. And what I had learned in school was not education. What I got in school wasn't education. It was indoctrination. I was taught how to be a good American citizen. And in this country, we think that the only Americans are the ones who live in the contiguous 48 states of the United States. Americans are everybody from the very north tip of Canada to the very south, southern tip of South America. But we, in our arrogance, say that we are the only Americans. If you're really going to keep this America with two Americans, we don't dare build a wall on the southern border of the United States because those people, those brown-skinned people that are going to come across that border are Americans. Now, we'd better choose our language or choose our behaviors. Let me tell you something. It wasn't a study, and it wasn't an experiment. Exercise. I don't experiment with children without their knowledge or their permission. It was, an ex it was experiential education. It was giving a child an experience for the purpose of changing their brain. And that's exactly what it does every time I do it. Now, you conducted the same study. Uh, I'm sorry, not study. Exercise. Exercise with adults. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And is it any different between the children and the adults? Adults get more violent. I've been hit several times by black, white males, angry white males. I've had a knife pulled on me. They ran, ran me out of Uniontown, Pennsylvania at midnight one night, three carloads of blacks did, to get me out of town because the teachers that I put through the exercise in a very limited way were so angry that they called the superintendent in the afternoon and said, if you don't get that bitch out of town, we're going to kill her. So they got me out of town. First time I've been scared, and the last time I've been scared, because I found out that day that they could kill me, but they couldn't kill the idea. Victor Hugo said, no force on earth can stop an idea whose time has come. The idea of one race, the human race, is an idea whose time has come. We are not going to be able to stop it, no matter what they do. They can elect Trump after Trump after Trump, and that will not stop the idea that there's only one race on the face of the earth, it's the human race, and we are all members of it. You and I are cousins. Now, if you don't like being my cousin, that's too bad for you. But we are all in the same family. We are members of the family of man. You say that all whites are racist. Can you ex expound on that, please? Any, any white person who was born, raised, and schooled in the United States of America, if you aren't a racist, you're a miracle. Either that or you decided to educate yourself. Because education in this country is about white is right, brown's all right, black's got to stand back. Yellow's mellow, but whites, we, we educate in a way that says that white males have done all the adventures, have made all the adventures, have done all the discovering, have made all, and everything that is good and has been accomplished has been accomplished according to social studies, which is actually anti-social studies, by white males. It's a lie. It's a lie. But we do that in order to maintain the myth of white superiority. The myth of race has to be maintained at all costs in this country. Because if white people have to give up the color of their skin as being something that makes them perfect, what do they have left? None. If we start teaching the truth about history, if we start teaching about Nile Valley contributions to civilization, it will totally change the way we conduct ourselves in the classroom. It will have to. Columbus didn't discover America. You can't discover a place where people are already living. But we celebrate that every October. It's a lie. We need to get over we all, we need to stop telling the myths and start telling the truth. Mask the lie. So when you tell people that they're racist and it, <laughs> it must have some kind of effect because most people will say, I'm not racist. I'm not a racist. Why some of my best friends are black? Right. Yeah. And then you say name one. <laughs> or this one. I don't see color. And when some woman says to me, I don't see color, I say I knew that if you saw color, you wouldn't dye your hair that way. 
Or I say, if you, didn't, if you saw color, you wouldn't wear that shirt with those pants. I believe that you don't see color. It's an attempt to deny skin color. And it's attempt, an attempt to deny what's wrong with seeing the color of my skin. Is it all right for you to see me kind of pink? That's OK for me. I don't mind. And I suspect that you don't mind being seen the color you are. You have a right to be what you are. And until people in this country and people in this world get it into their heads that the first modern human beings that evolved on this earth were black women. They evolved in sub-Saharan Africa about 280,000 years ago. And every human being on the face of the earth today runs the me has the memory of those black women's genetic structure in their genes. Now, we don't want to admit that, but that's the way it is. And people, as people moved farther and farther from the equator, their bodies produced less and less melanin, so their hair, their skin, and their eyes got lighter. As they moved into the east, they ate a lot of fish and a lot of vegetables, so their skin took on a different tone. I found, I found that out when I was raising little kids. My husband worked in a supermarket. He, had, he was the head of the produce department. And they had lots of oranges that they couldn't sell, so he'd bring them home. And I was feeding my kids orange juice like you never saw in your life. They began to have an orange cast to their skin. I thought they had something, a liver problem. So I took her to the doctor, and she said, what are you feeding these kids? I said, well, lots of orange juice. She said, stop it if you want them to stop being orange. Now, if you think that skin color isn't anything other than the body's natural reaction to the natural environment, get over it. So if all white people are racist, according to you, can they be reprogrammed? Of course they can. Of course they can. Of How? course they can be. You, it's called education. I'm an educator. The word educator comes from the root duck deuce, which means lead, the prefix e, which means out, the suffix ate, which means the act of, and the suffix or, which means one who does. An educator is one who is engaged in the act of leading people out of ignorance. Now, I know you can change them. My, the second... The second year I did the blue-eyed, brown-eyed exercise in my classroom, it was filmed by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. They gave me a copy of that film. I showed it to my father. My father was about 59 years old at the time. He's been a farmer all his life. He raised six, he raised six, seven, six kids, lost one, raised, seven, raised six. Watch that film as a 59-year-old man. When it was over, he stood up, and with tears in his eyes, he took his red handkerchief out of the back pocket of his overalls, his bib overalls, and said, I wish somebody had taught me that when I was nine years old. Nobody had dare say to me, this doesn't work. This is too harsh. This isn't necessary. You can't teach an old dog new tricks because they're wrong. You can teach an old dog new tricks. You can teach people to give up the myth of racism. Somebody taught the Greeks to give up the myth that the sun was a god in a golden chariot that went across the sky every morning. They believed that for hundreds of years. We have believed the myth of three or four races, different races in this country, for long enough. 572 years or something like that is enough of that. It was a lie to begin with, and it's a lie today. <laughs>